okay so this method i'll be using in order to create any account okay so here what i'll do is i'll call my uh, i'll use my my account variable equals to i'll say something like new account okay. and my new account will be created all right so if you create a new account or if you go to okay this is lightning okay if i go to my account tab and if i create a new account okay there are some required fields that we have to provide while creating the account that same thing is followed for here also so here what we are doing is we are creating a new record of my account okay so if i go to anonymous window also and from here also if i want to create any record for the account okay for that we can use the s object and we have to use the new keyword in order to create a new record it's not like we are creating a new object okay we are not creating a new object like opportunities or leads okay we are just creating a new record all right like a new record which has some id and that will be saved in my database okay it's not like i'm creating a whole new object and creating a new uh, template no okay we are adding a new record to my records account of uh, records of account okay so that will also be added so in order to create a new record we need to use a constructor for the account and we have to create a use our new keyword okay so if i want to create a new account let's say so as of now you just forget this example just concentrate here if i want to concentrate uh, create a new account or let's say if i want to create a new opportunity so how do i create it i create it using new opportunity okay and in this so this this will create my new opportunity but that new opportunity that instance that i have created that new record i have to i have created i if i need to grab a hold of that then for that i need a variable which will be pointing me to that particular record so that variable what data type of that uh, what data type will be for that variable so that has to be of opportunity type itself because it is holding an opportunity record okay so that is why we will be using this part so this is just like creating a normal variable okay like maybe op equals to so this op this op variable will be pointing to the new instance of the opportunity and that new instance will be a new record so every time we want to access that particular opportunity we can access that using my opp so if i want to add some name to my opportunity okay uh, okay if i go to opportunities so here are like three required fields in opportunity so opportunity has like more than one required fields one is the stage name one is the close date and one is the name of the opportunity so these three are the required fields so if you create any record if you want to create a record you must provide the required fields also and if you have any validation rule created in the opportunity let's say validation rule uh, that you have to provide some discount percentage or you have to provide some amount also so that also has to be must be followed okay so it is just like you are creating a record from the main page also it's the same thing so both the places you have to follow the rule okay you cannot skip that okay yes exactly that also is fine but as of now i have already defined the account variable i have already defined my account variable so that is why i'm using just my account equals to new account okay okay so here i have not defined in the second in, uh, point here i have not defined any op variable opportunity before so if i do something like opportunity opp equals to new that means i'm declaring a new variable so here i'm declaring a new variable and the value i'm assigning is a new instance of the opportunity okay so that my account is a global variable yeah here it's already created so it is a global variable okay if i had created it inside then it will be a uh, local variable okay. okay 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 so that is why i remove i will let that is why we are concentrating on this because this is like starting from basics i jumped from one step so okay. that is fine okay okay so like uh, right now i have created one new opportunity but still if you go to the opportunity tab you will not be seeing this opportunity yet 
okay because we have not provided any value so to provide any value what we can do is we have to give opp dot let's say we have to give name name equals to we can say something like maybe uh, demo opportunity okay so this name is coming from where this name is coming from the api name okay so if we go to the uh, fields here okay if you see what is name name is the opportunity name okay so this is what we are accessing from this opp dot name so whatever fields you want to give value so you can add that here okay just like like this where you want to cre add create a new opportunity so here you are accessing those fields using the label and you are providing that value similar to that if you want to provide any value to any of these fields that you can do using the api name and what about the custom fields that you create so these are standard fields so what about the custom fields so custom fields you have to access using the api names like if you want to give some value to this test so you have to give test underscore underscore c so this is a checkbox so if you want to give that value to that checkbox then you have to say something like opp dot test underscore underscore c now you have to give as it's a checkbox so checkbox means it's a true or a false that means it's a boolean type so what value you have to give you have to give either true or false okay so in this opportunity here let's say what is the label for that uh, this thing okay let me check out where is that field here huh. so this is the field so if i want to give a value to this particular field visually or on click of the mouse i'll either check it or i'll uncheck it so if i check it that means i'm making it true if i uncheck it then, then uh, that means i'm making it false so if i want to give the value using a code then i have to give here true or false so i can say true okay so as it's a checkbox so that means you need to know what is the type of the that part, uh, type of data that particular variable or that particular field has to store and only that type of data you have to pass if you give here like if you make it a string or if you make it a uh, sorry if you make it a string then it will throw an error when we try to execute this okay because we are trying to assign a string value to a boolean variable okay that is not possible okay and we must follow the required fields also so the required fields that we have to give are stage name also so we have to give opportunity dot stage name okay so here i'm not calling it as stage because the api name of that particular field is stage name if you see the label is stage okay but the api name is stage name so if you go to opportunities and if you view the fields so here we have stage name and also it's a pick list so it's a pick list that means you cannot write anything you have to write the value which is all which is provided in these pick list values okay so you cannot write any other string you have to, you must provide a value which is in that particular pick list so values which are defined like these values you have to give prospecting qualification need analysis value preposition id perspective all these things closed one closed lost so these are the values only that you can write you cannot write something like on your own okay as it's a pick list so you have to be careful while adding values using the code because we need to know what type of data it will store and it, we also need to know like what kind of field it is whether it's a checkbox or whether it's a pick list or whether it's just a normal text field okay so i have to give some value here like i can say uh, maybe prospecting okay so still my required fields are not met one name is there one stage name is there and another is closed date so if i want to give a closed date then i need to add that value also so i have to give something like close date okay and the value i have to give i cannot write the date like in in the quotes or something so date is a different type of variable date is an object type of variable okay it's an object so you have to provide an object for that closed date so for that i'll create something like today uh, sorry i'll create date dot today so this will give me an instance of today's date okay and that i'll be assigning to my closed date so if i execute this whole part my opportunity record will be created 
okay that is only created in the code it, it will not be inserted in my database so in order to insert that record in the database I have to use some DML operation okay so what's a DML operation DML means data manipulation language database manipulation language so in order to insert something in the database or to delete something from the database or to query something or uh, to update something so all those comes under DML operations okay so if I execute this whole thing still my record will not be inserted because I have not done any database manipulation so far okay so in order to change the values in my database I need to do a DML operation so here what I need to do as this record does not exist so I need to create a new record so I have to do insert OPP okay if this record already existed then we had to do update okay okay so let us try to insert this and let us see okay so now it is inserting and I have not added any debug log so it will not come okay so oh, before insert trigger is getting called so there is a trigger running in the background so as of now we will not focus on that so if I go to my opportunity list of records so if I refresh this list I must see one opportunity that is created for us and we can also see that particular checkbox okay that checkbox also must be checked because we have provided a value as true okay and the stage is also prospecting and the close date is today's date okay so that is how we will be creating any new record Right. so if you want to access this same record once again then you cannot do that using this opportunity OPP equals to new no if you do this again it will create another record okay and it will insert another record it will not get you the same record so in order to get the same record we have to do an SQL query okay so anything that you want to get from the database for that you have to do an SQL query okay so let us say if I, if I uh, want to add some more fields to this particular record so if I do something like OPP dot uh, any other field let's say I want to add some value to uh, what is year of subscription here we have a pick list one two three four five okay so if I want to or and what is the API name of this particular field let me check the API name years of subscription okay so let us say if I, I want to add some value to this particular field then I cannot just say something like equals to 1 okay if I do this now it will create another record okay it will create another record with the same name and these values and it will add the value to that particular record it will not go to my existing record okay it will not go to this record so if I want to access this record for that I have to use SOQL query okay and also after adding values we need to do an update operation so here we have to do update OPP okay but if I execute all these things okay if I execute this that will be executing fine there's no problem there's no error here it will execute fine okay but if I go to my opportunity list of opportunities here so here another record is created with the same values okay and the difference that you can see in these two records is one will have value in that particular field and one will not have values in that field in the end in the end we added uh, years of subscription to one of the records so it has created a new record okay with the same name with these values and it has added one years of uh, subscription so if you see in till this point it has inserted one record so till this point it has inserted one record and now here we are updating the record which is which is going to be inserted okay and with this uh, instance this OPP it is accessing only the current instance so it is not accessing the record that we are creating that we already created the one before this okay so in order to access that we need to do a SOQL okay so if we see here so we must have some years of subscription here huh. so this is a new record that we have created now if you see years of subscription is there 
okay and if you see this one here years of subscription will not be there because this is the previous record and we did not uh, access that so if i want to access that then we need to do a soql query okay so i have to write something i'll just give you a very basic soql query we are not jumping into query as of now okay so we have to write something like uh, select name comma uh, years or we have that copied here years of subscription comma uh, or that's it from opportunity and I want to access this record okay I want to access this same record so I have to write a clause where uh, name equals to demo opportunity okay so this query this query will give me the records that are contained in my opportunity database on database in the opportunity table and where the name is equal to demo opportunity so all the records will be fetched so as of now i have two records with the same name demo opportunity okay so both the records will be fetched but we don't want both the records we want only the one where years of subscription is not filled okay so i have to give that clause also here so i have to write something like and along with the name you also have to match this particular field and years of uh, so we have to add this field also and years of subscription not equals to none. okay so now it will give me the record which doesn't have any value in the years of subscription okay and so the record that it is going to fetch that you have to save in some variable okay so that variable we need to define first so we have to say something like opportunity my opp equals to this okay so let us try to debug and let's try to see what it actually fetches us so we'll call system.debug and we'll call my opp so you can directly insert that in a debug statement and it will display all the fields which are there inside that particular record okay so if i execute only these two lines okay so let's see what it has got us so it got us the record where the name equals to demo uh, and years of subscription equals to one okay Okay, so that means it is fetching us the first record itself, the second record that we have created and years of subscription also it is showing. But I have given not equals to null. So that means I have to, don't have to give here null. Oh, not equals to null I have given, right? Ah. So that is why it is giving me the record which is not equal to null. So years of subscription is not equal to null. I have to fetch the one which is equals to null so that we can update that value. You guys are getting confused or we still fine? Fine, sir. Fine. Any doubts yeah. so far? No, sir. You're able to understand. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. Okay, okay. So now, see, I've changed it to years of subscription equals to null. Now, this will give me the record which has, which does not have any value in this particular years of subscription. So it will give me this record ID. Okay, it will give me this record. So it should be this record ID. Okay, so now if I execute this highlighted part, and I go to debug log so it has given me the record ID and that field is not provided here because that field is blank okay that is null so the record ID if you see this is my 16 so this is my 18 digit ID okay so it should be MX SQAV so this is my 16 digit if you remove this from the last three msxs okay so you guys know what is the difference between 15 digit id and 18 digit id
Fifteen digit is Salesforce, are they right? Okay. So 18 digit is also Salesforce only. So here, if you fetch anything from the database, then it will give you 18 digit ID. Okay. okay so whatever yeah. is saved in the database, that will be 18 digit. And whatever it will be displayed here, okay, this is 16, uh, 15 digit. Okay, so 15 okay. digit is the case sensitive part and 18 digit is the, the one which is not case sensitive part. So if you remove the last three characters, Okay, then it will become the 15 digit and this will be matching to whatever we have. Okay, so using mm -hmm. this ID now, if you fetch that, if you fetch that record again, let's say if I fetch it here. Okay, I fetch that record. Ah, shit, sorry. So if I copy this and if I fetch that record here, now it will be point, point me to that record. Okay, where the years of subscription is equals to null. Okay, so that is 15 digit and that is 18 digit. Okay, so if you retrieve it from the database, you will get 18 digit. Okay, to make it 15, you just have to remove the last three characters. That will be same. Okay. Okay, okay. So okay. now we have got hold of that particular record. So all we have to do is do an update. Okay, so here this my OP, my OPP is pointing me to this record it is pointing to this record so all i have to do is my opp dot years of subscription equals to i have to give some value from the pick list okay and after that also we have to remember to update statement we have to also write an update statement because we are manipulating the record from the database so in order to do that we need to write an update statement if the record already exists if it's a new record then we have to do an insert okay Okay, so I'll remove this debug log here. So my OPP is holding that record. So all I have to do is my OPP dot. I have to add this record, this field. And I have to give one value as let's say four, three. Okay, so from the pick list, pick list is also a text type of uh, field only okay it's just that the values are predefined sorry so if you want to add some value to that particular pick list then you have to give it in the format of a string but the string must be the one which is there already in the pick list okay so we can only give values which are provided in the pick list you cannot give some random values okay and it always has to be enclosed in a quotes now after that we have to also do an update operation so we have to do update my opp okay so if i run this once again okay if you don't run the first line if you don't execute the first line then it will say that my opp doesn't exist okay because my opp why it doesn't exist because we have not declared that variable okay if you execute the highlighted part it will say variable does not exist right now it doesn't know what is my opp Okay, we have to tell him that my OPP is the one which contains the whole record. Okay, so for that we have to execute all of them. So if I execute the whole entire anonymous window, if I execute the whole thing, then it will create another record. It will create another record called demo opportunity. It will add these values and it will add years of subscription also and it will update that record. And after that it will fetch me this record which already exists where the subscription is equal to null which is our first record and then it will be updated okay so we don't want to create another record here so we will execute only this part okay so now if i execute the highlighted part okay so as of now we have not added any dem uh, any debug logs so that debug log will not contain anything okay so if i go to my record here so here years of subscription will be added as three okay so that years of subscription is added so that is how we can access existing record and that is how we will be we will be creating a new record okay the same thing can, will be followed for existing s objects also or any other uh, any s object like maybe a stat, uh, standard or maybe a custom okay so that is how we will be accessing those in triggers also or anywhere okay so if you want to create any new record then you have to use a new keyword if you want to uh, use an existing record then you have to access it from the database okay you have to query it from the database using soql 
okay so we'll see more details about the soql how to add these where clause and all that we'll see later as of now for example i've shown you guys okay so so far are we clear yes yeah okay so if you don't add this dml operation if you don't add this update statement it will add it only in the record only in the uh, what you call only in the code it will not be inserted in the database okay the changes if you want to make any change to the database you need to do one a dml operation okay. all right so if you want to access any of the existing uh, standard objects so this is how you do it if you want to access any of the custom objects so you have to know the name of the custom object underscore underscore c and the fields also you need to know and what type of field it is all those things you need to know in order to access that okay all right so let us check out what we have to see next Okay, primitive data type we have already seen. Collections we will see. Okay, so variables you guys are clear what's a variable. So all these things are variables only. So this OPP, my OPP, all these are variables because we are creating a data type and we are assigning it to a variable. So this also is a variable. Okay, you guys understood what is a variable? Yes, sir. Yeah. So primitive data type is fine. S object, if you have any questions, just try to go through this example. Okay, try to go through or try to create your own records using this code. Okay, and you should if you have any doubts, any questions, you can let me know. So this is about S objects. So S objects are any objects, any S object means Salesforce object. Any object that is there in Salesforce, any standard or custom object that is a Salesforce S object. Okay, so that is how you will be creating a record from the code. Okay, so collection is a very big topic that we will not start today. List, map and set. Okay, so variables, I think we have seen. So constants. Constants, if you just uh, uh, say final here, public static final, then this become a constant. Okay, and what's a constant? Constant is any uh, variable itself, but you cannot change the value of that particular constant more than once once you have assigned this particular value to this uh, final variable or final uh, this data type then it will also be, always be containing the same record okay so that is what final is and to how to name the final so in order to name the final you have to follow the convention which is like all uppercase it is something like my account like this now if somebody reads our code they will understand that this is a final variable if, even without looking at the keyword and anywhere else in the code if you have written that uh, final statement so they will come to know that this is a constant okay. so once that value is assigned to the record then you cannot change it okay that is what final is if you want to create some kind of constant throughout your code like pi constant or gravity constant or any anything that you don't want it to change like any count or any flag like boolean true or false if you don't want it to change through any your entire code then you can declare it as final okay okay so that is about the final And scope of variables are global variables, local variables that we have already seen. So if you declare anything inside any method or any other scope, then that will become local to that particular scope. Scope is this scope. This is our scope. Okay, so if you if I declare a variable here, so let's say as of now I'll remove the final part. Okay. And So as of now, if I don't declare this from here, okay, if I declare it as account, so that means it becomes a local. So if you try to access this from outside the scope, then it will not be visible. Okay, so that's a local variable. Okay, so that is about the scope of variables. Okay. And if you create any parameter in that method, that is also a local variable. So all the parameter variables that you create, that is also a local variable. Okay. Sava, is it possible to initialize in that statement itself, like public static account, my account is equal to? Yes, yes, it is possible. So there are constructors which are available in the account. Okay, so this, you can pass the value here itself. You can say name equals to 
here you can say uh, my above uh, above the method we have a, like we are initializing here declare. no above that public static account my account so you want to say something like public static account my account equals to new so here, character yeah, yeah. No, this is not possible. Okay. okay. This will not accept. So if you declare something like this, because all these executive type of statement that you have to write either inside a method or in a constructor. Okay. So okay. apart from that, you only have to declare variables. Okay. 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 Okay, let me try to save it and let's see what error it throws. Okay, it is not throwing any error as of now. Okay, but you should not be creating it like that. So you have to create it okay. somewhere here. Okay. And instead of like uh, accessing that my account dot any other field, you can also initialize it from here. So this is like you're passing parameters to the constructor. You can say name and you can add any other values. Like we created some opportunities here, right? Uh, like we created one opportunity here. So if we wanted, we could have done something like this also. We could have done something like OP opportunity. Uh, OPP one equals to new opportunity you can also do like name equals to we can write all these things directly inside my bracket also inside my parameter i can just pass and it will accept okay i can write something like so now i don't need to write the name of the variable okay now i can just write name and i can write the this field i can initialize this field i can initialize this field okay so this will also be inserted fine so if i say something like notification um, this is another stage from the pick list okay so like this you can pass and you don't have to write semicolon here you have to write comma okay, you have to write it comma Okay, so you have to separate all this with comma like this okay so this is also a valid statement you can initialize using this also okay even if you don't write this variable here okay if you don't write the variable still it will work fine okay but you will not be able to get hold of that particular record that you are creating Okay, is this that we are creating a record and we are also assigning it to any variable so that we can access that variable later. So this statement will also work fine. If I execute this also, this also should work fine. But it will not insert anything. Okay, this will not insert anything because we have not added any insert up, insert, insert statement. Okay, so in order to insert anything, we need to know the name of the variable also. Only then we will be able to do an insert. So we can write insert OPP one okay now if I execute these two things so this will be inserting okay so this will be inserting to my database and now I'll be able to find that record somewhere in my opportunity step okay so one more is inserted now okay so that is how I'll be creating our s objects So this collection will dedicate one class or not even one class it will take like two classes to complete the collections part okay so classes we know how to create classes so to create any class all you need to do is just go to file and create new and we have to create an apex class and then you have to define some members of that so one member is a variable and one member will be of the method type and we've also seen static non-static all those things we have seen 
then objects we know how to create objects so in order to create object we need to use a new keyword and we need to call our constructor so as of now we have not created any constructor here so by default the default constructor will be called and the default constructor is always added by the compiler okay so always to create any object you need to call the constructor that is required so in order to create an object for this we will have to call a constructor but as of now the object will not contain any members because all the members are static and static is not part of the uh, object okay static is part of the class okay the only part of the object is the non static parts okay the non static members are the ones which are part of the object okay so as many objects as we create this static part will always be same for all those objects okay but if we have non static members all of them will have separate separate copies for separate uh, instances okay we have not seen this uh, sequence of execution also that we will see now okay so we have some static members and then we have some non static members also so let us try to create some non static parts okay so we'll create a non static public let's say i want to create another let's keep it simple okay we'll not create an account okay we'll create some let's say string and let's say static uh, str okay i will call it as static str okay and then i'll also create another non static so i'll call it as uh, string and then i'll call it as maybe non uh, static str okay and then i have a static method and i'll also include a non static method so i will include public uh, void and i'll make it as let's say method uh, ns i'll call it as ns method okay okay so why is this throwing me an error public static void account so i'll not create an account here as of now so i will just be uh, calling it as maybe oops static method okay that is fine okay and i'll write just to notice the when this particular method is getting called i'll just add one debug log so system dot debug so i'll add uh, uh, static method called that's it okay from also here also we'll add one system dot debug i'll say a non static method called okay and then we have these variables also so these variables as of now there are no values inside this variable so let me try to create oops so we have initialization blocks okay there are two types of initialization blocks one is a static initialization block and one is a non static initialization block okay so what is a so let me write it down here so one is a static initialization block and one is a non static initialization block so what is the use of this initialization block initialization block is used to initialize the variables so the non static that means the object they have constructors to initialize the variables okay in the constructor you can write initialization statement of those variables but what about the static part static doesn't have any constructors so to in initialize if you want to initialize the static variables you can like on load of the class or on creation or or on call of the class you can do that inside the initialization block static initialization block so what it looks like so all you have to do is you have to write the static keyword and you have to write open and close bracket so this is my static initialization block So this is a static initialization block. Now inside this, whatever you write, that will be called automatically when the class is loaded. Okay, so when the class is loaded, automatically this will be called. 
because when the class is loaded this point is very very important when the class is loaded the first thing that is loaded is the static part okay the non static part the object all those things are not loaded when you load a class or when you call anything from the class the first thing that is loaded is only the static parts okay so here you can actually initialize any of the static variables so you can say maybe static uh, str equals to hello static uh, string something you have written okay so now every time i use this particular class so the value of this static str will be this value that is given from this static string okay public static static str equals to hello and this is not able to save it it is throwing me an error maybe the variable does not exist yet let's check out the error so illegal forward reference mm, so that is a problem So it was showing me an illegal forward reference. So what does that mean? That we are using something forward to its execution. Okay, so the variable was not defined or it was not declared yet. And in the static block, I was using it. Okay, so the static things are loaded. So everything is execution is always line by line. So when the class is loaded, so all the static things are loaded line by line. So right now this variable will be loaded and then the static block will be loaded. And in the static block, we have to initialize that variable. Okay, that is how the loading will happen. And let's try to uh, write a statement also here, debug statement, so that we come to know that static block is executed. So we can write something like system.debug uh, from the static block. Okay, and we can write the value of the variable also here by plus we can say a static str okay so this is my static initialization block okay now every time i load the class or load this particular uh, we call anything from the class the whole class has to be loaded first so even if you want to debug a statement for this static str okay the whole class needs to be loaded all the parts of the class needs to be loaded and when the part of the class is loaded only the static parts is loaded okay the non-static part is not loaded that means the non-static this part will not be loaded to the memory okay so the static part the non-static part is always loaded only in if you create an object okay so this statement is very very important that static parts or static members loaded when are they loaded when the class is loaded okay and also static members are only loaded once that's it so for the whole execution the static members will be loaded just once okay when the class is loaded and it is loaded to the memory only once okay that means my static initialization block will be executed how many times it will be executing only one time okay and then we have also something called non-static initialization block so to create a non-static initialization block all you have to do is write two brackets like this so this becomes my non-static initialization block and this is also a member of the non-static part that means it belongs to the object so non-static variables, non-static methods, all those belong to the object and the static parts belong to the class. Okay. And the static parts are loaded when the class is loaded. Non-static parts are loaded when the object is created. So when we call new keyword, okay, when we create a new object, that is only when the object will be loaded. Before that, the object is not loaded in the memory. Okay. So only after calling the new keyword, the object will be created and they will be loaded to the memory. Okay. So from here, we can initialize the 
non static variables also so we can say non static str equals to i can say something like uh, hello non static string okay so again if i save it will say it must show me like a forward reference or something so so illegal forward reference non static str so till this statement non static uh, is not initialized or not even declared so we have to put this statement somewhere before okay so now this should not throw me an error and now i will put one system dot debug log also and this debug will from non static block and we will add the value of the non static str also so i'll say non static str okay okay all of them have a debug statement so that we can know when that particular part is getting executed okay okay let's save it and let's try to execute okay so how do we execute so in order to execute something we have to call that so if you if you call the variable then only the value of that variable will be shown to us or if you want to make a call to this method only then this method will be loaded okay so if we call any variable let's say if i go to anonymous block here so as of now you forget whatever about uh, the top parts okay okay so let us try to debug any of the static members so can anyone tell me how do i access my this static variable if i want to put it inside a system dot debug okay i want to uh, static uh, variable goes here and i want to add the value of the static variable i want to get the value of the static variable this static str how do i get the value we have seen this before just static str static str okay will this work this anonymous so block is... sorry uh, this anonymous block is unaware of the class that you have created okay, so class name dot yes so we have to say as object demo dot static str let me make it a little big yes so now my uh, anonymous window is aware that this static str is coming from where it is coming from the s object demo class because we have given the path it's just like giving the path if you see the urls also they have path what is this path this is path to the different different folders that they have created in the database Okay, similar to that we have to define the path here also okay so now if i execute this line let us see what all statements are executed as of now we are expecting only the static str to be displayed okay but that is not what is going to happen if you just notice so if you execute the highlighted part so let me minimize this so if you see from the static block okay so if we go back to our code so where is that from the static block is coming so it is coming from the static initialization block okay so that means our static initialization block is also executed okay but the static method is not executed it is loaded in the memory but it is it will not be called it will be only called or whatever code is there inside the method will be only executed if we call that particular method or else it will not be executed okay so as of now as soon as you call anything any uh, thing from uh, any static member of the class so the whole static part will be loaded to the memory so the static variables will be loaded static initialization block will be loaded and then the static methods will be loaded to the memory 
okay but static log will all automatically be called okay if you see here did we uh, execute the static block no we did not so it is automatically called when the class is loaded okay so the static initialization block will automatically be called when the class is loaded that means if we initialize the variables here the static block will automatically initialize as soon as we uh, call the anything from the class so when the class is loaded then the variables will also be ready it will have some value okay, so that is why we put the initialization in the static initialization block so that is how we will be initializing the static variables if we want if you want you can also initialize it in the methods also but the methods will not be called automatically they will you have to call them manually if you want something to be ready as soon as the class is loaded then you can put it inside the static block okay okay but why did the other things did not why did the non-static part did not get executed non-static block this did not get executed because we have not created any object so unless we create object unless we use the new keyword non-static part will not be loaded so my non-static str will also be not loaded okay so if i go to my anonymous window once again and if I try to debug the same statement and here I'll put the non-static part. So static variable, I'll say, uh, I'll remove these comments. So I'll say object variables goes here. Okay. And if I call my s object demo dot, uh, what is that? Non-static. Okay. So this must throw me an error. Okay, because this non-static variable does not exist. As we are giving the path of what? We are giving the path of the class. So this is not part of the class. Non-static are part of what? They are part of object. So in order to access that, we need to create a copy first. So that copy is created how? That copy is created using the object. So as of now, this these things doesn't exist. All the non-static part, non-static methods, non-static variable doesn't exist. Only they will come into existence when when we'll creating an uh, when we'll create an object. Okay, at this point you have to remember throughout your entire Salesforce life. Okay, so if you have to create a new instance, then how do you create? You use a new keyword. So you say new s object demo and you call the constructor. So this constructor have we defined anywhere in the class? No, we have not defined. So where is this constructor coming from? Salesforce will automatically put a constructor if there is no constructor defined for the object, because this constructor is the one which will be which will be creating all the members of the class. Okay, that is happening in the back end that we don't have to worry about. As of now, you just have to remember the syntax. If you want to remember the concept also, you can remember that this constructor is automatically put by the Salesforce execution when you create a new object, if you have not created any constructor. And if you create any constructor in your class, then this default constructor will not be added by the Salesforce. Okay, and then the compiler or the uh, runtime environment will not add the uh, default constructor okay so this is a default constructor okay so this is how we are creating an object so now if we need to get hold of that object that we have created for that we need to create a variable also so we'll so that what is the data type of that variable data type of that variable is our class that we create so that is why we write the syntax like this so that is we write s object demo uh, obj equals to new so that is the meaning of this first part that here we are declaring a variable of what type it is a s object demo type this is what this is a user defined data type remember when we discussed about the data types we have the first thing that we have seen is a primitive data type which are the string integer boolean float all those things are primitive then we have a user defined data type so user defined data type is what it is the class that we create so class is also like a structure that we create a template so that is also data type that we are creating so here we have created a data type so any variable that we declare using this particular data type s object demo data type that is a variable that is contain that is capable of containing this particular object that is why we are assigning this object to this variable because this object uh, this obj is declared as s object demo which is a data type and this data type okay. is defined by who? It is defined by us. So that is why it's a user defined data type. 
Okay, is this clear? Any confusion? Yeah, it's clear. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yeah. These things you have to remember. This is object oriented programming concept. This is not from Salesforce. Okay, this is all OOPS concept. Okay, because we'll be dealing every time with objects, so that's why I told you guys. Okay. Okay, all right. So now we have created an object. So if I create an object, I execute only this line. Okay, I'll not execute. <coughs> sorry. So I'll not execute anything apart from this line. If I execute only this line, okay, let us see what happens. Okay, I have not executed any of this. So even if you want, I can comment it. I'll comment it. Okay. So just notice what all things will be executed. So if I execute only the last line, I've just created one object. And if you see what the logs will come from where, it will come from all the static as well as non-static part also. Okay, if you see here, the static block is also getting executed and the non-static block is also getting executed. Okay, so the static block is getting executed. Why? Because as soon as you load or you create a new variable or in, you, sorry, you create a new object, so the main class also has to be loaded. Okay, that doesn't mean that this uh, object contains that main class, um, the static parts also. No, the object uh, doesn't know about the static part. Okay, so as soon as the class is loaded, the first thing that will be loaded all the time is the static part. Okay, and then the non-static part will be loaded. Okay, so now the non-static part is loaded and that means that the non-static execution block is executed. So that will be executing only when we create a new object. Okay, so now if I do something like if I put a debug log also, so if I put a debug log also, so object variable goes here. So now I don't have to use the name of the class here because it's a non-static part. I have to use obj. So I have to use obj dot non-static str. Okay. So now the value will also be displayed. Uh, if I want to call the method also, so we can call obj dot. Then whatever is the name of the method, I have some. I think so. N sorry, N S method. I think. I have. Okay, now if I execute these three things, so my non-static parts will also be executed, but the static will also be loaded. Okay. So if you see here, so first my static part is loaded, then the non-static part is loaded, then my debug statement is coming. This is coming from where? It is coming from the method. So object variable goes here, and then the non-static method is called. Okay, so all these things are happening. Now, just notice one thing. If we create another object, if we create another object, let's say I create another object, obj1. Okay, and I do the entire thing once again. Or let's just, to, to keep it simple, I'll not do all these things. So I'm just creating two objects. One is obj and one is obj1. Okay, now just notice what these things will happen. So if I execute the highlighted part now, remote <laughs> Okay, so if you see now, so the static block is also loaded, non-static is also loaded, and non-static is loaded once again. Okay, why? Because we have created two objects. So every time we create a new object, non-static part will be loaded, but the static part will be loaded only once, because the class will be loaded only once. Okay, this thing you guys have to remember. That the static part is loaded only once for the whole execution because the class is loaded only once for the whole execution. Now every time you create a new object, non-static parts will be loaded again. Okay, and the non-static initialization block will be executed once again. Okay, okay so it will run only for the first time, right? Sorry? It will run only for the first time. What? Okay. The static initialization block yes. will yes. run only for the... Yes. Okay. Okay, so even if I create another object here, okay, if I create another object, let's say if I create obj, 
2. Okay. So if I execute, so it is not only about the static initialization block, it's also about the static parts. So the all the static members, be it a variable or be it a method. So they are also loaded with the class only once. Okay, for the entire execution, the static, the whole static members are loaded only once. But non-static will be loaded every time you create a new object. Okay, that means you are creating a new copy. OBJ is a different copy. OBJ1 is a different copy. OBJ2 is a different copy. Okay, so the variables which exist in OBJ, they are also in OBJ1, they are also in OBJ2, but they are different, different containers. They are different copies. So if you change anything from the OBJ1, or obj they are exclusive they are not uh, merged so if you change the what is the name of the variable that i have here non static str you guys are getting late i think uh, we should wind up okay okay fine we'll continue the same thing okay i'll keep the because I was in the middle of something that I needed to show you guys also. Okay, fine. We'll discuss this tomorrow. Okay. So, so far you have to remember that uh, the static part is loaded once for the entire execution. The whole class is loaded once for the entire execution. Non-static parts, the object parts are loaded every time the new object is created. Okay. This point is clear, okay. everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. So whatever we discussed today, any doubts, any questions? Mm -hmm.